Hey YouTube. Uh, see, I'm kind of upset. I didn't get raptured. I know, I know. And apparently, neither did you. I know we're all upset about this because, you know, we can't really figure out what happened. What, 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 what went wrong? I said, yeah, I know I'm theist agnostic, but, you know, I flung to the Southern Baptist Church. Once saved, always saved, but I had. I had the ultimate fire insurance. Why, why weren't we raptured? Surely his numbers were correct, his random dating, random numbers that he added, subtracted, multiplied, divided. Surely that was correct. Surely May 21st is the correct day. I had some upsetting news. I discovered why the rapture didn't happen, and well, a little something like this. See, the flying spaghetti monster told Zombie Jesus that it was time to come back to Earth. So, Zombie Jesus got into his little starship and flew towards the universe. Actually, he flew towards the wrong universe in the multiverse, of course, so he had to find the right universe. And of that, he had to find the right galaxy of the hundred billion galaxies in our known particular universe. And then he had to find the right star because of the billions of uh, stars in our galaxy. Uh, there's only one that has a planet Earth, right? So he went to the wrong solar system. He went to the wrong Earth of the 500 million possible inhabited planets in our galaxy. He went to the wrong one, and that's where he was on May 21st. So when he beeped the horn in this little starship in here, Expecting the rapture to happen, and nobody came up. He realized that he went to the wrong story, so he he recalibrated his onboard computer, and he went towards our star. So this was now uh, May 22nd, and he's finally coming towards our planet. And he got to the inner part of the, the solar system, and he was headed uh, back way around Mars, coming towards Earth, when suddenly... He crashed into Burton Russell's orbiting teapot. Oops. So now, Zombie Jesus is out there in the middle of nowhere with his broken spaceship. I know where to get here. But don't worry. He may have died, but he's going to be resurrected in three days. And But, of course, he'll still be stuck out there. Now let's get really serious. Where did this go wrong? Well, basically, this uh, camper guy, or whatever his name is, started with an arbitrary date. Several arbitrary dates. One arbitrary date for the creation of the world. Another arbitrary date for the completely fictional Noah's Flood. An arbitrary date for the birthday of Jesus. An arbitrary date for his death, burial, and resurrection. And from that, multiplied a bunch of random numbers together and came up with May 21st, 2011. Now remember, this is the same guy who said this was all going to happen in 1994 with an asterisk saying, oh, okay, maybe also 2011. This is all based upon numerology and it's important to realize where this all came from. Okay, basically this all started in the days of Pythagoras. Of course, see, this is the same guy that uh, did the right angle hypotenuse equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. He also invented geometry. But his version of geometry, which you can read if you ever read uh, Plato's Republic, and also, interesting enough, you find some information in Carl Sagan's Cosmos. Uh, Pythagoras and his followers believed in the concept of perfect solids. Now, what are the perfect solids? Well, it's easy. If you ever go to the comic book store, you can always pick up a sleeve of the classic D&D dice. Now, let's go through these. So, we start with this little number. This is the tetrahedron. Four-sided die is four equilateral triangles folded in on itself. This is supposed to represent fire. This is the cube. 
six squares. Obviously, everybody knows what it is. It is supposed to uh, represent Earth. Now, there's actually a reason why it represents Earth, because if you have several of them, you can stack them on top of each other and build something with them. It's supposed to represent something that is solid. This little number, our octahedron, is once again built from uh, equilateral triangles. Basically, when you look at it closely, you will notice it is actually two pyramids joined at the base. This is supposed to represent air. This fancy number, of course the fanciest guy in the bunch, is the icosahedron. This is supposed to represent water. This is, if you look really, really, really closely, you notice that this is very, very small equilateral triangles built into a pentagon formation, and four of those pentagon formations equals a 20-sided die. And this one, I saved the best for last, is the dodecahedron, the 12-sided die, basically 12 pentagon shapes. This die is supposed to represent heaven, or spirituality. It is, was considered sacred to the Pythagoreans. And the reason why I bring this up because the number 12 is found in many places throughout many different uh, mythologies. Of course, Jesus, as we know, had 12 disciples, allegedly. Hercules had 12 followers. There's 12 tribes of Israel. 12 is all over the book of Revelation. It was supposed to be a very, very spiritual number. It is particular to note, of course, that when Mr. Camper did all of his phony baloney math to come up with May 21st, he said that 17 was the number that represented heaven. Proof that he was just pulling this out of his ass. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the 10-sided die. Of course, this is not considered a Pythagorean solid for one particular reason. If you look closely enough at the side of the die, you notice that it isn't a square or an equilateral triangle. It is, at best, a diamond shape. Longer at the bottom, shorter at the top. This would not be considered a perfect solid according to the Pythagorean beliefs. That's why it's not included. Here's the bottom line for all of you rel religious people that are out there wondering when the rapture is going to come. Here's a dirty little secret. There's no such thing as a rapture. There is no Messiah. There is no mythological person that's going to show up and just pull you away and leave all of us uh, dirty little non-religious people to ourselves. It's simply a flight of fantasy. It's not going to happen. Sorry. Deal with it. But I wanted to do something else. It's obvious that camper came up with this doomsday scenario based upon faulty logic, faulty numbers, bad math. Basically, he made it up as he went along. So I want to set a date for the non-theist rapture. That's right, all this atheists, agnostics, secularists, skeptics, when we're going to fly up to meet zombie Jesus in the sky, and guys like Carl Sagan will meet them in the air. And how I'm going to determine this is I'm going to roll these D and D dice into this little pan. And we're going to look at the numbers and determine what those numbers mean. And that is going to be the atheist rapture. Okay, here we go. Now, I've never played D and D before. I have no idea. What even these numbers are supposed to be. But I'm going to put the results up on the screen. Anybody that's played D&D &D can tell us what these numbers mean. We would greatly appreciate it. The person who comes up with the best answer gets the Crash Zombie Jesus Lego set. Thank you for watching.